Good day everyone and welcome to Navigable Rivers. Okay, now that I've got your attention, let's get into it. Obviously today was gameplay reveal day and we have so damn much to talk about. I want to start off by saying that in many ways I will be quite uninformed here compared to other content creators you're going to see. Firaxis actually flew a lot of people out to Baltimore to play the game early, so I would highly recommend going and watching those as well for some proper gameplay footage. So consider this a high level overview of what I saw. Alright, day 209, turn 209, yeah yeah, let's get started. So, the world. First off, I think the art style looks great. I think the world looks fantastic. As we discussed, yes, we now have navigable rivers. I hope you're happy, everyone. Natural disasters are back. I spotted volcanoes, I spotted tornadoes, I spotted cyclones, at least. I liked natural disasters in Civ 6, so I'm glad they're back. Particularly stuff like volcanoes, if they still improve tile yields. Big fan of that. Also worth mentioning here, trains. Train stations confirmed. Keen to see how those bad boys are implemented. Elevation is a thing, very cool. And I'm also just going to go ahead and drop this absolute bombshell. There are no builders in Civ 7. Moving on. Possibly the biggest change up to the formula this time around, we have Civ slash leader mixing. So to clarify, when you start the game, you now pick a leader and a starting Civ but any leader can now lead any Civ. And these leaders have attributes that transcend ages and you upgrade your leaders over time, essentially. So what are ages, you may ask? Well, the game is now broken up into three ages. So you start out in the Age of Antiquity, then we move on to the Age of Exploration, and then the Modern Age. That's the three ages. So just like in Civ VI, uh, the entire world moves through these ages at the same time, but these ages seem to be massively defining moments, so at the start of every new age, everyone chooses a new civilization to lead, depending on various conditions being met as seen here. So for example, we've got your default one where Egypt can go to Songhai, where if you get a lot of sources of horse, you'll be able to pick Mongolia. That's just one example. This uh, will sound very familiar if you've played Humankind, and this is definitely the most contentious change in the community right now, based, just based off the initial reactions. Let's see how it all shakes out over the next few days and, and months, but those who have actually played the game seemed optimistic. Another small thing on this topic is the idea of personas. Much like the various personas for Teddy Roosevelt, for example, in Civ 6, you know, you had Bull Moose and the other one. It sounds like they might be doing something similar here with Emperor Napoleon, you got Revolutionary Napoleon. Uh, these are the personas you'll get for creating and linking your 2K account. As for the narrator, this was actually the first thing revealed on the live stream. The narrator for Civilization 7 is Gwendolyn Christie, aka Captain Phasma, aka someone from Game of Thrones. I'm sorry, I never watched Game of Thrones, but yeah, she sounded awesome. Um, can't wait to hear more from her as more content is revealed. As for the music, Christopher Tin is back, and each Civ will have its own theme. My absolute dream here is that they also bring back peace and war themes from Civ 5. The English peace theme in Civ 5, I vow to leave my country, it's up there with the best tunes they've ever done in Civ, in my opinion. Team, there's, there's so much more to talk about that I just can't cover today. Um, all the revealed leaders, these uh, leader screens looking like that, uh, independent powers, aka city-states, settlers forming towns before specialising the cities, settlement limits, army commanders being able to hoover up units so you don't have to move a million units around in the late game. So, as I said, go watch other content creators because they've got the real in-depth scoop. I was watching Ursa and Bose's live stream and there was some really good discussion happening there. It might even still be going on when I release this video. So, comment down below with everything I've forgotten to mention here. What are you most excited about? What are you concerned about? Keen to hear your thoughts. And, oh, did I forget to mention, it's coming out on the 11th of February next year. Not many days to go now, but until then, I'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.